It's just going to do all of these other very bad things for your overall health. Your cells can actually blow up, but they more just fall apart. I'm Dr. Anderson. This is my YouTube channel. So let's dive into this cell membrane versus bad guy. So there's two big areas we want to look at. The first one is that the attack can come from things that are going to affect the cell from usually the outside, and the attacks can also come from the inside. And then we'll talk about what do they cause? What, what is an attack? What's a bad guy to a cell? So the first thing is a free radical, which is a, a molecule that has an electron that can easily jump around, can go and cause lipid peroxidation. So we talk about cell membrane. It's got a, a water-soluble and a fat-soluble part. So I'm bombarding the cell membrane with a bunch of lipid peroxide radical generating substances or free radicals. They'll go in and they'll start to make the lipids more oxidized. And an oxidized lipid is usually not that good for you. We'll get into why. But that's one of the big ways that that happens. The other thing that can happen, though, is that the phospholipid and the phosphate head, that can become dysfunctional either through the phosphate head and interaction with free radicals or through the phospholipid, the lipid phosphate coming together. Remember, it's a phosphate head and two lipids. That can become inflamed. It can become oxidized. It can become toxified, etc. And a damaged phospholipid leads us to bad cell membrane activity, which leads us to disease and other things. Another thing that can directly happen, which may or may not have a component of free radical biology, is attachment of toxins. Toxins love to get on your cell membranes and hang out there. Some of them like uh, the uh, protein portions of your cell membrane. Some of them like the lipid. Some like the phospholipid parts. Some just like the phosphates. Uh, but toxins uh, just love getting in there. They love just wrecking havoc with your cell membranes, etc. And so when we think of this, and we think of toxin attachment, and we think of oxidation reduction, we want to keep in mind that we have these natural defenses for this in the body, which is is if you put a bunch of toxin in somebody, you can eliminate some of it. And so you may not have full coverage there, but we do have antioxidant or redox system. So if I oxidize your cell membrane, I have a reduction system that should come along and take that free radical away. The problem is I can burn that out. I can not have enough. So we'll talk about that in a moment. The next thing is that these things are not just made and then they're there forever, right? The phospholipid bilayer is constantly trying to turn over because in our biochemistry, largely in our liver and a few other places, we are making new types of lipid we can export and send to the cell. We have new phospholipids that are made through the triacylglycerol system. And uh, for those of you that like biochemistry, you can look up the triacylglycerol system at the very bottom of it is phospholipids that are going to go and normally be part of your cell membranes and do good stuff for you. But what happens if we're not turning over and making new stuff? Well, the thing's going to fall apart, okay? So if you have any other thing in your life that has to be maintained and you don't maintain it, it's going to hold together, hold together, hold together, and then one day it's going to get dysfunctional, and then the next day it's going to fall apart, okay? So you're up on a farm, and if you don't take that when you're done working with it and clean it out and get all of the th things that will oxidize it out of there, maybe and grease it and do all those things, it'll still work. It'll keep going. It's going to get rustier and rustier and will work less and less efficiently. And then one day that thing's going to either blow up or just not work anymore. Well, it's the same with your cell membranes. Very dynamic, lots of stuff turning over. So we need to always have enough of the oxidation reduction system uh, working. We need enough nutrients to run that. We need to minimize our toxins and we need to eliminate the ones that we can. And then we also need enough good guys, good fats, good phospholipids going into these cells so that we can replace and repair. Then there's the final area of receptor attacks I want to talk about are going to be receptor modifiers. We have these receptors that usually are on the outside of a cell. Now they can either be a receptor that simply alerts the inside of the cell like a second messenger system, okay? You might do that through adrenaline, epinephrine, or you might have a ligand receptor where a hormone comes along, but that thing goes all the way through the cell, those integral proteins, and when that ligand, but binds on the outside, it opens up this channel. And then we 
let a bunch of, say, sodium in or some other good thing that we want to go in the cell. Okay. Well, receptor modification can happen because of all of the above. Oxidation reduction imbalance, binding by toxins, and that includes binding by drugs, and many other things that just gum up the system. And so you could have a totally normally functional cell, but all of the the mechanics uh, that let good stuff in and keep bad stuff out now don't work like they used to because we gummed up the works with all of these other problems. But what do, can these attacks cause? Well, the first thing is it, without good maintenance, the cell membranes without good new fats going in. Some membranes will start to get stiffer and stiffer, and that means it's going to collect more oxidation. It's going to collect more free radical activity. It's not going to move as well. It's not going to communicate with other cells near it as well, which is a big part of keeping your tissues healthy and stuff like that. It's just going to do all of these other very, very bad things for your overall health. Well, your cells can actually blow up, but they more just fall apart. They just, they just need to be turned over. But if we don't have all the good guys there, we make a new cell, it's still going to be dysfunctional. The next thing is that whatever your cell does can become so poorly functional that um, the cell might as well not have even showed up for work that day. And so if you think about it, once these attacks come along and my some membranes are messed up and I've got toxins and you know and, and free radicals all this stuff working on if my cell's job is to do X y or Z X y and Z ain't getting done today okay or is going to be done very at a very very poor poor level of efficiency so poor cell function is what we call disease usually so caring for the cells and trying to move these attacks away and helping to rebuild good cells are a way to decrease the amount of disease we got going on. The other thing that happens, we see this a lot with people who have, who have had long-term chronic illnesses, uh, toxicity, certain drug exposures, etc., is that the communicator molecules in the body will quit working as well. Well, who's the big ones? Hormones. We have people who literally look like they have low hormone. You test their blood, they do all the right tests, and the level of that hormone is totally normal. There's no reason it should be abnormal, but their body's acting like it is. Well, what if they have plenty of that hormone floating around, but the receptors for the hormone are so damaged and beat up from either toxicity or oxidative damage or all these other things? Well, that's going to make you look like you have a deficiency of a hormone. And in reality, you just don't have any place to bind that hormone that's going to be helpful. So that's another example of uh, you know incorrect function that goes on. And then the next one is you might develop a long-term chronic problem because the cell has not been able to become healthy and heal itself over time. Super important. If I keep hammering away on my poor self, and I keep messing with all of this extremely elaborate architecture, I might develop a particular type of disease like autoimmunity or some other thing that will then alter the course of my health potentially for the rest of my life. So your cell membranes are terribly important. If you like this video, check out all of the playlists that we got going on. I do these all the time. Love answering your questions, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks.